Welcome, welcome. This is going to be so much fun today. The Blusan top, there's two reasons why I'm doing it. Number one, if you go back in history, the Blusan is the uh, probably the one style that makes everyone look just really much thinner than what they really are. And it's simply because there's a Blusan effect or this gathered effect. And then what's under the gather looks smaller than the gather. And so you look much thinner than what you actually are. It's a great classic style, the blue sun. And so I'm going to show you how to create it. The other reason I chose it is because you, we can, there, we have so many beautiful fabrics right now. We have laces, we have shears, we have so many beautiful non-stretch fabrics that we can take and make this top out of. I, I'm using one particular fabric. But my goodness, use your imagination because there's so many out there and they're all beautiful. Shears, just again, what it, what it makes a difference is what you back behind it, what you put behind it. So we're going to talk about all those variables today. There's really kind of three sections. First, we're going to do the fabric choice, then the pattern, and then I'm going to go through the sewing for you. And I've drafted it. I mean, I drew it out. Drafted is kind of a lofty word. I drew it out. So I'm just going to literally draw it out as y'all are watching. So you can do the same thing with your tank. 514 is the tank I'm using. But even before we start with that, let's talk a little bit about fabrics. So I just love this fabric. From the minute it came in, this is fabric 2358. I just love it. I love white lace. Not married, not getting married, but I love white lace. So this is a great excuse for me to throw on white lace. And you know, I went through two scenarios. I went through, gosh, I could put it on white with white because monochromatic is so popular for the summer. I could do white with tan. That would be a great combination or just a classic white and black. And you know, it was easy and I just went the white and black. But this is a great lace. I love it. Again, the fabric is 2358. And then we have this beautiful white, um, it's a cotton knit, it's 100% cotton knit, it's a real thin rib, and that is 2421. I use two yards of this top, whatever you use, sheer, lace, whatever you use, two yards, and then I used one yard of the base, because all you're making out of that is the tank, and then you'll need a yard of elastic. And our elastic in particular, the two inch wide elastic that we have, you can cut to be any width you want. So if you already have this elastic, you don't need any more. And if you don't, um, this is great because you want to cut it to a quarter inch and that's what's going to go around the bottom. Okay, so let's talk pattern. I did the tank top. The tank top is my base underneath. And then I made the overlay with the tank top. So out of the first fabric, the cotton knit, you're just going to cut the tank top just like it is no changes. The only change is you're going to cut off one inch off the length. You want to make, and it all depends on how long you want it. I left, I knew how long my tank top was and I just left those lengths. I trusted them. But you do take one inch off because you want the outside length to be longer so that it will come around and do the blousing, obviously. So tank top, just like it is, take one inch off in length. Then I'm going to make the actual overlay. I'm going to use the tank top as the base and I'm literally going to walk you through this. All right, easy stuff. So what I need from the tank are really three things. I need the angle of the shoulder. I need the neckline or the base neckline. And then I need approximately how long it is so I can reveal it and, and relate the two together. So I'm going to lay and I'm just going to make the same garment but I'm going to make it, I'm going to use the same front, but I'm going to make one overlay for the front and the back. The only difference I'm going to do is I'm going to change the neck edge because I do want the neck edge to be lower in the front and higher in the back, like a regular top is normally. I don't want them to be the same in the front and the back. And, and I'll show you how to change it and it's very easy to do. But the first thing I'm going to do is just make the base. And from that, I'm going to trace the shape of the shoulder. And I'm going to add two inches to the bottom. I'm going to add two inches plus a seam allowance. So that's actually two and three eighths. And I'm just going to draw a straight line. And then you want to add, you've got to add the amount of blue sun that you want. So very easy to do. My base tank top is 40 inches. So the front is 10, the back is 10 times four. So it gives me my 40 inches. 
you should add another two inches to each of those pieces. So I'm going to make my bottom 12 so that I have the amount that I need. So I'm going to lower this the two inches plus the seam allowance and I'm going to draw it out 12 inches and that will be adequate. If, you, if you're not sure, just think one, and don't go one to one and a half, it, that's almost too much because that would be five inches out. Maybe split the, middle, split the difference of that. So instead of one to one and a half, do one to a, one and a quarter. And that'll give you, you know, you just don't need all that extra. It's just too much fullness. So I did my 10 and I turned it into 12. All right, so now I've got my top line, I've got my bottom line. That's really all I need the tank top for right now. And then I'll show you how to draw on the neckline. This line has already got a, an angle determined. So I'm gonna continue that line, but I'm gonna bring it out 17 and a half inches. So from the very base of the neck right there, I'm gonna bring it out my 17 and a half inches. Again, that is how far it goes from this point to this point. You can see it's total styling. If you don't want to cover your elbow, you make it less. That length of that line is complete styling. Okay, then what I do is I'm gonna use my French curve just to give it a little bit of styling. You would not have to, but I'm gonna connect this shoulder line, the shoulder angle here, down to the bottom. And I went and I used, to, again, to give it a little bit of softness, you'll see this. I, I did 18 to zero. And you, you'll see that when you lay down your French curve with 18 to zero, it's gonna give it just a little bit of softness on the edges there, rather than it being just a sharp, a straight sharp line. A straight sharp line anywhere in our bodies are kind of harsh. So whenever we use the French curve, the French curve softens those lines a little bit, makes them a little softer. And I'm gonna put a notch right there because later that's gonna become my stitching line. And then there'll be about four inches left to where I'm connecting to the bottom. Okay, and I'll, again, I'll explain those in a minute. But that's my pattern. And now all I'm gonna do is draw in the neckline. And I'm gonna draw in two necklines. So for the first neckline, it's gonna be the back. And whenever we see the back, I'm going to lay the French curve down in this position. And my back neck edge, I did 21 and a half to 16 and a half. If I put 21 and a half on the French curve right here, there's only one place that 16 and a half will come in. So wherever that place is, I'm gonna connect them. And that will give me my back neckline. The front neckline, I'm gonna put, the French curve goes this position. I'm gonna put 15 and a half at the shoulder and 21 and a half at the front. And again, those two numbers are only gonna be able to yield me out one position. So that's the advantage of the French curve and the advantage of having those numbers. Okay, so now when I look at that, what I see is this is the front and this is the back. So I'm gonna cut two identically and I'm gonna cut them both to the back and then I'll just cut the front away. That's just really easier. This goes on the front, it's a fold. And voila, I've got my pattern. All right, fun stuff. And this is actually the real one I use and we'll put them on top and we'll see how I did. How about that? They're identical. <laughs> All right, so that means I showed you exactly what I did and that was the goal. I didn't want to just show you this one because I felt like I might leave something out or you know not include something, but there you are, you're ready to go. You're gonna lay it out and you're gonna cut one for the front on the fold and one for the back on the fold, which is why you really need the two yards. Okay, so we've got our pattern ready. Let's go sew. This is again, really fun and easy. You guys, I had so much fun finding this top, making this top. And again, I, I found it. The original was, oh, I don't remember the designer, I'm sorry. But anyway, um, it was a sheer. Sheer with a underlay, a little tank underlay. And I thought that is so simple. It's just really simple, so, and pretty. Um, so you're gonna start sewing, and what I did is I made the tank. So I put in the darts and did the shoulder seams. You don't have to finish the armholes if you don't want. It's your call, your top, your call. The reason I did not is because I, whenever you finish something and it's under something else, it gives it a little bit of a lump. I did not want that lump. So I left the armholes plain, unfinished, 
you know, you can serge them and leave them, whatever you feel comfortable with. But just FYI, you don't have to finish those armholes, they're underneath. Then what you want to do is you want to put the two neck, so the shoulder seam of the overlay, and then put the two neck edges together. You're going to put the, the, um, the lace on the inside, the overlay on the inside, and then you sew them together. And I just did it on my sewing machine, and then you're going to flip it to the outside. And you can see, even though you can see through the lace, you cannot see that seam. It's just too, too small. And just, like I said, if someone's looking at that kind of stuff, you just, I don't know, just don't worry about it. Um, don't serge it. It's too heavy. Just do it on the sewing machine and then flip the overlay to the outside and the neck edge will be finished and the shoulder edges will be finished. So now what you're going to do is, and I talked about this notch and what it was, is I'm going to turn sideways for you and show you. And I just did this on the sewing machine. It's not necessary to do this on, um, on a serger. In fact, I would not. So keep in mind right now we have the neck finished, the tank top is made, the bottom is open. So I'm going to sew just the two overlays together and I'm going to sew them just these four inches. Now that is the notch is what that is. Now if you want to, you could sew that farther up. You can see that again I was copying the original top. You could go up farther if you wanted, but the goal is to kind of leave this open. You're, you're covered underneath, you've got a tank top underneath so you don't need to worry about it. And if you stitch those four inches, open up the seam allowance, then you can come all the way around and finish that seam by just tucking the edge under and top stitching, which is what this all is. So now I've got the two sides finished. And then you're just going to literally sew together the top to the bottom. You have to keep the edges even because the outside is going to be longer. So just keep the edges even. What I did is I just went all the way around and serged them together. And then I took my little quarter inch elastic that I'd cut and you want to take it down to what you needed it to be in the first place. So remember mine was 10, it was 40. I took mine down to about 33 because your elastic at quarter inch is going to give a little bit. You can always adjust it. You can always take the sizing out if you need to. But I took the 40 and went down from there because it will come up a little bit on your waist. And so it's okay to go a little bit smaller than that with your elastic. So all I did was I took those, those serged edges that are together, I folded them under, I put the elastic in between, and went around and made the casing. I mean, the top did not take, I don't know, I always hate to say time frames, but it was very quick and I was pleasantly surprised. I threw it on and I'm like, oh my gosh, I love this top. I love it, it's exactly what I wanted. I wanted something lacy and light for summertime. And again, just to pair with something different. I, I really think I like the beige look. I'll have to make myself a pair of, oh, you know what? We've got this beige 2429, 2429. That would make a great outfit. All right. So the blue on top, the goal is have a great summer and look skinny for the summer. Happy sewing from Silhouette Patterns.